Welcome back to the World Economic Forum and this next session, which will be very special and we are very happy to have this opportunity. This is a session that will be a conversation where we're going to be discussing women's rights in Iran for the next 30 minutes. In light of the Nobel Prize awarded to the imprisoned Nagas Mohammadi in late 2023, uh, we have here with us her husband, the journalist and activist Tagi Rahmani, and we're going to be discussing the future for Iranian women movement in 2024. I want to give you a little bit more information because this conversation will be uh, very different and very special. Uh, Tagi Rahmani is a former political prisoner. He spent 14 years in jail. This is the longest for Iranian journalists. He is a censored journalist uh, who's been fighting ever since and not stopping. He's now based in uh, Paris with the family and we also have this great luck here to have uh, with us uh, the lawyer representing the family and a family friend, Shirin Ardekani, who is on stage. and. Uh, Shirin will be helping us with the translation. This will not be the simultaneous translation. This will be consecutive translation. We'll be taking some pause in our time also to understand and Shirin would help us to facilitate this conversation and to make sure that it works at the best possible way because this is the subject where we want to take our time and also focus on the importance of it. Thank you so very much for being, thank you. Uh, let me ask you for the, for, for the first question. Following the events of um, 22 and 23, what is the current status of the women life freedom movement today? Uh, First of all, I'm really glad to be here and uh, many thanks for this uh, very great invitation. And uh, this is a very important question, uh, women rights in Iran, and I will take my time to explain this. حکومت ایران بر اساس تبعیض بنا شده و این تبعیض در قانون اساسی جمهوری اسلامی نهادی نشده ما سه تا تبعیض بزرگ در جمهوری اسلامی داریم یکی تب... یکی ظلم سنفیه یکی ستم فرهنگی و مذهبی و یکی تبعیض جنسیتی که زنان رو مورد هدف قرار میده um, you know, the political system in Iran is built on discrimination. The constitution of the Islamic Republic of Iran justifies uh, discrimination, which includes class oppression, cultural and religious tyranny, and gender-based discrimination against uh, women. And I will focus uh, on the issue of women, especially. در کشوری که تعداد دانشجویان دختر از دانشجویان پسر بیشتره در کشوری که از 22 میلیون سرپرست خانوار 3 میلیونش زنه در کشوری که به لحاظ اجتماعی زنان مهر لیاقت خودشون در امور مختلف به شکلی چهره های فعال در مشاغل نشان دادن um, this is a country where the number of female university students surpasses that of males, and up approximately three million women are the breadwinner of head of household. So the women have a strong social and economic presence everywhere in the uh, Iranian society, and have fought to demonstrate their capabilities at every level of society. جمهور اسلامی تبعیض همه جانبه ای به زنان اعمال میکنه تبعیض الان تبدیل به ستیز شده یعنی به با زنان و جامعه در حالت جنگ این تبعیض آشکاری که جمهور اسلامی بر زنان ایران اعمال میکنه قانون اساسی جمهوری اسلامی قانون مجازات جمهوری اسلامی قوانین مدنی که توش نهادی نشده رو به چالش گرفته 
Yet, the Islamic Republic imposed a set of wide-ranging discriminatory written and unwritten rules against Iranian women. Much of it are the host of hidden bases and in many other cases an open warfare against them. As I mentioned, it starts from the discrimination that is uh, in the constitution of Iran and in the Islamic penal code. So that's it's the main issue issue of Iranian uh, female is the, the Islamic law, actually. in Kutabian. ولی بر عکس جمهوری اسلامی بر اصرار داره بر فشار بیشتر و ستیز بر زنان و فشار جنسیتی و این ادالت جنسی بهش میگه ادالت جنسیتی و رهبری جمهوری اسلامی برابری جنسیتی قبول نداره به اسم ادالت جنسیتی تبعیض اعمال میکنه the very presence of women in public and private sectors in cultural and social spheres is a real challenge to this system of gender-based oppression. In response to this presence, governments insist on stricter enforcement of their Islamic law, leading to uh, hostility against women in every aspect of their life, their daily life. The leadership of the regime considers gender equality as an affront to his rules and thus openly promote gender-based injustice and has codified in, in their own daily laws. But Iranian women are restricted from pursuing certain academic fields and professions. Zanani Irani Barkhad Mashogar Nemitawan and Dostosha. Masalam Ray is a dot go, Nemitawan and Bishava. Magadar Mamor de Hos. Zani Irani Nemitawan at Ustondor, Farmondor, Vazir, Yoma of Menad, Yom Ray is a Majdis at Con and Guzori Shavet. That's working Tavon Rodora. اما در سمت مشاور ریاست جمهوری که به تایید مجلس نیاز ندارد منصوب می شود اما قانونی نمی توانند برخی از مشاور را داشته باشند نمی توانند کاندیدا برای مقام ریاست جمهوری شوند نمی توانند در انتخابات مجلس خبرگان رهبری که قدرت زیادی دارد کاندیدا بشوند نمی توانند عضو شورای نگهبان شوند نمی توانند نمی توانند کاندیدا Iranian women are restricted from every aspect, professional aspect. They are effectively barred from being a judge. They cannot be a judge. They cannot become governors. Appointing female cabinet ministers has been met with furious backlash by regime loyalists. The closest regime has allowed more women to play a role in executive branch uh, of uh, ministry, cabinet ministry, uh, but it's not possible now for uh, 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 an Iranian woman uh, to be judged and some of profession uh, are completely uh, uh, prohib prohibited uh, for, for them. اما گشت ارشاد نماد این تبعیض و سلطه بر زنان بود تبعیض به سلطه حکومت تبدیل شده و مسئله سلطه در زندگی زنان کاملا وجود داره ولی مقابله زنان در مقابل این تبعیض بسیار مهم است ما گفتیم که جمهوری اسلامی از سلطه به ستیز رسیده است یعنی با زنان و بخش زیادی از جامعه به مقابله رسیده است ولی این مقابله به خاطر مقاومت زنان و مقاومت مقاومت جامعه در مقابل تبعیض جمهوری اسلامی است یعنی دیگر جامعه در مقابل تبعیض مقابله می کند ما به مرحله ستیز رسیدیم گرش ارشاد 
it's a morality police patrol in Iran, symbolize the regime's endless quest for dominating uh, women. The issue is not just about forcing women to cover themselves when they step out of their house. It's about the daily reminder of presence and power of the totalitarian system on women. Uh, by the uh, obligatory uh, and compulsory hijab. با وجود سرکوب جنبش زنان جنبش در خیابان اما مقاومت ادامه دارد روزی نیست که ما شاهد مقاومت زنان در جامعه نباشیم انکاس اون را در فضای آنلاین شاهد هستیم مقاومت نظام برای اعمال محدودیت بر زنان از جمله حجاب اجباری به خاطر مقاومت زنان و جامعه به ستیز کشیده شده است و از اون جایی که سلطه بر زنان اعمال دیکتاتوری است به مقاومت جامعه بیشتر کرده است Even now the sheer number of women who on a daily basis risk fines arrests and worse uh, has forced some of the clerical rulers to contemplate change to the implementation of Islamic penal laws, recognizing that the resistance of the world women of society, especially women, has created an irreversible shift in Iran. We command in Mohammed that are the Shoy Jome, we have to Harakat Hoy Hukumat, Tahirot Yot Karda, Kedar Oyan de Shohedon Hohimbut. In Tahirot, Barhi as Ruhan Yunro, with Tajir Nazar, that is Jo Akome Shariat, Vahato, Kayre Laws and Budan Hukumati Dini Resondas, Kame in Ho, the Hotter Mokovamat is anon, that Mokobele Tap is a Hukumatis. The Iranian government is starting to realize uh, women, Iranian women are really hostile, hostile to this law, the, uh, he, the, the law who install uh, compulsory hijab. And this law aim is to control society by attacking women's rights. Imposing control cannot be sustained solely, solely through coercion, as women's and societal resistance has created some fractures in so civil society. This rift will continue to widen with uh, the as resistance by many men who support uh, their sisters, their support uh, women uh, that continue his fight. می توان گفت ستیز حکومت برای سلطه بر جامعه از طریق حمله به حقوق زنان به لحاظ ارزشی شکست خورده است با قوانین اجبار اجباری نمی توان سلطه را حفظ کرد چرا که مقاومت زنان در جامعه میان جامعه و حکومت شکاف انداخته است این شکاف به مراحل جدیدتری هم خواهد رسید البته با توجه به مقاومتی که زنان در در مقابل این فشارها سلطه حکومت ایجاد کردند um, the global civil society and human rights organization can assist in this in this struggle and this is a duty uh, in particular providing unrestricted access to information and about the uh, struggle of Iranian women. Iranian و رعایت حقوق بشر اعلام شود حقوق زنان در مذاکرات با حکومت ایران به عنوان سندی برابر با سندهای اقتصادی معیار قرار بگیرد how global uh, civil society can help uh, Iranian women in this fight providing unrestricted access to information and the freedom of internet for all Iranian is really uh, crucial 
demanding that international organization to address the situation of women in Iran persistently is very essential. Women's rights should be a central part of world powers negotiation with the Iranian government and treated as an inseparable part of any agreement, any agreement, be it economic or political. First, respect women's rights, and after, we can negotiate. جامعه مدنی در غرب باید به دولت‌های غربی فشار بیارند که اجازه ندهند که زنان برای پوشش اختیاری مجازات شوند و در مقابل این مجازات ها با ابزار لازم بیستند جامعه مدنی و نهادهای حقوق بشری به تقویت نهاد زنان در ایران بپردازند و اما به مجازات های بی برنامه نظام جمهوری منجر به تقویت نهاد های مدنی در ایران صرفا نمی شود This is really crucial, really important to put women's rights in the center, in the center of any discussion, any negotiation, even diplomatic, even uh, uh, political, even economic agreement, economic meeting. It's important to have a crucial, a crucial focus on human rights in general and women rights in particular. It's the start of every discussion everywhere. برای آزادی زندانیان و زندانیان زن در ایران تلاش کنیم امروز یکی از کانون های مقاومت زنان و بند زندانیان زنان ایران است برای آزادیانان تلاش کنیم فراموش نکنیم نظام تبعیض جنسیتی به سلطه و به ستیز با زنان رسیده است این نشان می دهد در جامعه ما مقاومت در مقابل این ستیز وجود دارد more efforts should be made for the freedom of female prisoner in Iran with a current focus on the worst of uh, political prison in Iran, the Evin Prison Women's World, which has turned into a center of women's resistance. And we all know that Nargis Mohammadi now is uh, currently uh, in uh, the event prisons, but is, she is not the only uh, political prisoner. She has a lot of uh, 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 activists um, uh, with her, uh, unfortunately. ببخشید که این جواب سوالی خود طولانی شد ولی به نظر من باید برای تشریح موقعیت زنان ایران بهش I'm so sorry to be uh, long, but it was really important for me to say what I uh, would to say, and sorry about that. Um, I would like to ask you, with the recent events, with the two journalists, Nilou Farhamedi and Elaher Mohammadi, they were recently temporarily released on bail after being imprisoned in Iran following their coverage coverage only of the 2022 death of uh, Masha Amini, according to, obviously, the accusations that they've heard of themselves. Given this temporary release now recently, uh, what that means for the movement? این خبرنگار دو تا خبرنگار زن که شجاعانه 17 ماه زندان کشیدن کار خبرنگاری خودشون انکار نکردن گفتم ما کار حرفه‌ای خودمون انجام دادیم خب let just recap the situation of these two journalists these two journalists endured almost 17 months in prison for being journalists and nothing else one reported on Mahsa Amini's hospitalization and after her death sparking nationwide protest in Iran the other Nilufar covered Mahsa's funeral Mm -hmm. facing months of interrogation, imprisonment, and sham uh, trials. They were recently released from uh, Evin prison on heavy bail, you mm -hmm. mentioned it, uh, around uh, 2,000 uh, uh, 200,000 uh, uh, dollars, uh, but they are uh, banned from uh, leaving the country now. 
ولی مهم این بود که اینا وقتی از زندان در آمدن بیرون به احترام مقاومت زنان ایرانی هجابش از سر برداشتن و با پوشش اختیاری اومدن این باعث شد قوه قضایی یک گفت اینا باید یک هفته بیشتر نمانه و برگردن زندان و این نشان میده هنوز در جامعه ما در هر روز مقاومت در مقابل حجاب اجباری و سلطه بر زنان ادامه داره But you know the most important is photos of them these two journalists when uh, they uh, be uh, they have been released a photo of them bravely refusing the compulsory hijab mm -hmm. upon leaving the prison and this photo uh, has been viral the judiciary uh, reacted uh, very furiously uh, actually adding new charges uh, on them and demanding their return to prison uh, in a few days so uh, this is important to have this picture this photo in mind یه نکته هم اضافه کنم جمهوری اسلامی به هر مخالفش میگه جاسوس اسرائیل و آمریکا و اینا در مقابل این اتهام مقاومت کردن به هیچ وجه اینا نپذیرفتن and you know uh, in the iranian uh, state of man and and mentality every activist uh, and every journalist every uh, uh, lawyer could be an enemy an enemy of the uh, iran nation and to be charged on spying uh, for uh, usa israel or every enemy countries so everybody could uh, uh, can uh, one day be arrested uh, just to have done his job a journalist lawyer or everything <laughs> Your wife is the recent Nobel Prize winner. Can you briefly speak on how your wife's contributions have impacted women's rights in Iran? Nargis Mohammadi, okay, now. Nargis Mohammadi, he is a very important person. He حتی در دیواره های زندان به او ادامه داده است به فعالیتش از طریق بیانی ها و کمپین هایی که راه انداخته است پایان دادن به آپارت های جنسیتی از برنامه های جدید و اوست که میخواد روش فرق تلاش کنند که در ایران و افغانستان متوقف کردن آزار جنسی در زندان های ایران به عنوان یک وسیله شکنزه حمایت از حقوق زنان هم او بشر و برابری حقوقی در جامعه کمپین های مخالفت با شکنجه انفرادی با سلول انفرادی که شکنجه است و همچنین کتابی و مستندی که به این عنوان ساخته است در اون یک سالی که بیرون بود همچنین مخالفت با اعدام و حجاب اجباری از جمله فعالیت هایی که اصلی نرگس محمدی بوده است You know, uh, to be clear, uh, my wife, Nargis Mohammadi, is first a humanitarian, a human rights activist. So that's why she is now in jail. She believes in equality for women, she believes in democracy, she believes in freedom of speech and freedom in general in Iran. But it's not uh, allowed, it's, uh, prohib it's, uh, it's something that, could, uh, that can lead you in, in jail. Even within uh, the confines of Evan, prison. She continued uh, addressing uh, her statements, uh, uh, but not freely. Uh, she, um, I mean, it's clandestine. Um, she continued uh, to give some uh, statement, campaigning, ending gender apartheid in Iran and in Afghanistan, stopping se sexual uh, harassment of uh, women, uh, even if uh, uh, they are in uh, jail, uh, his cellmates, advocating for women's rights, human rights, and equality. And these campaigns against um, uh, gender apartheid will continue, and not alone with uh, the female of even uh, prison, prison. And uh, she led a campaign against against solitary confinement uh, and torture, psychological uh, torture in Iranian uh, jails, uh, also known as uh, white uh, torture, uh, as well as uh, opposing to uh, death penalty and uh, 
you know that in Iran uh, there is uh, a, a lot of activists that every day are uh, in jail and after all the, they are concerned by death penalty. Uh, and uh, these are uh, initiative of Nargis and all uh, uh, Iranian activists, uh, they are in jail now. نرگس اعتقاد به تقویت جامعه مدنی و اولویت حقوق بشر در هر مذاکره دولت‌های غربی با ایران است. او باور دارد که حقوق بشر باید در اولین رتبه یعنی جایگاه از اصلی در تمام مذاکرات جهانی قرار بگیرد تا ایران هم تحت چنین عدالتی قرار بگیرد. Uh, Nargis believes in uh, strengthening the civil society and prioritizing human rights in any negotiation in Iran and both an international negotiation. She believes that human rights should come above all other matters in worldwide negotiation and justice and social justice should rule in Iran. But Uh, more generally in, in the world. Um, in the past, Nargis was not able to and in the Uh, during the woman life uh, freedom uh, movement that took place in Iran, Nargis was in jail, uh, actually. But she stood with the uh, people through her letter statements, and she uh, won the uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, it's right. Uh, but uh, the most important is the solidarity and the sisterhood among pre uh, female prisoners and more generally uh, between Iranians uh, and between women and men in Iran in this uh, movement than Zendegi Azadi, which is uh, women life freedom. Nargis has a problem with the heart and the problem with the heart. او باید به بیمارستان برود وقتی که مقامات بیمارستان از او خواستند که میبرنش بیمارستان ولی با حجاب و اجباری باید برود او نپذیرفت گفت به خاطر مرگ آرمیتا گراون و گفت به خاطر کشته شدن زنان زیادی و مردان زیادی برای آزادی من به خاطر همبستگی با اینا به هیچ وجه حاضر نیستم که با حجاب اجباری به بیمارستان برم به این خاطر چند روز این کار رو نکردم و نبردم ولی آقابت بردنش و او برای اولین بار از زندان اوین به عنوانی زن بدون هجاب رفت و برگشت که بعدا این دوتا خبرنگار هم همین کار کردن ولی جمله ای داشت که در اون جملهش گفت چند هفته پیش دنیا شاهد بود که جمهوری اسلامی برای گزینه دردآوری برای زنان اعتراض هجاب اجباری را اعمال کرد و مرگ آرمیتا گراون شد و و نرگس در حقیقت همواره در کنار جنبش زن زندگی آزادی بود است You know my wife Nargis uh, has a serious heart uh, problem and they're going surgery almost a year ago and her heart should be monitored regularly uh, but the regime officials um, do not uh, allow her uh, to go uh, to the hospital and uh, uh, she but uh, they uh, Uh, they, they, they said it's possible, but only at one condition, if you accept to wear uh, hijab. But she declined, of course, and she refused. Uh, and we, are, we were all worried about his uh, health situation. But that is the way Nargis Mohammadi is uh, uh, fighting. Uh, and in a point poignant statement she declared on the same time. A few, a few uh, weeks ago, the world witnesses the Islamic Republic government subjecting protesting women to a distressing choice of forced hijab or death. And I choose, I choose neither forced hijab and I want 
I, I don't want to be, to be dead. But it's my duty to fight, to fight with my sister and with the others. Nargis no soldier don't you see the Tala? Why at the Hudud Dah Sol, not that was that solid gas in Domukisha. Who that Mars, Mars do the BC, could that skill should Alan Nargis will punch a Tom Jadik Mose, Motor Mavose, Elomi, who has in Don Dot the Mose Grift. Set a Tom who be the Lip for Liatoyu Dar Zendon. کلیه تاماتو مجموعاً الان به دوازده سال سه ماه صد پنجا و چهار ضرب و شلاق چهار ماه ممنوعیت از سفر دو سال تبعید و انواع اقسام محرومیت های اجتماعی است Nargis has spent almost nine years of her life in prisons of the Islamic Republic of Iran, and she has almost 10 years more to spend in prison as every day they add to her new sentences. Since March 2028, Nargis Mohammadi has faced five convictions, three of them due to her activities inside prison, inside jail. Her total convictions amount uh, to um, 12 years and, uh, and three months of imprisonment and um, 155 lashes uh, and four months of travel ban from Iran two years of exile uh, and various social and political prohibitions. من آخرین بار که نرکس دیدم دوازده سال پیش بود. در شب سرد در زمستان از هم جدا شدیم. من اومدم بزاره و اون نایمد و بچه ها خوابیده بودن. الان نرکس نه ساله که بچه ها رو ندیده. و تقریبا دو ساله که صداشون هم نشنیده. چون امکان تماس تلفنی نیست. در در اوایل دسامبر 2003 بیش از جلسه جایزه نوبل مقامات زندان در 8 آذر ارتباط تلفنی اون با خواهر و برادرش در در تهران و مشهد قطع کردند و او از 8 آذر امسال حتی نمیتواند با پدر با خواهر و برادر خودش گفتگو تلفنی یا ملاقات داشته باشه 18 زن دیگه هم به خاطر همین موزگیری شامل همین محدودیه هستن در کل در کل فشار بر زندانیان سیاسی افزایش یافته بخصوص در بند زنا ولی مقاومت هم هست 61 زندانی سیاسی زن در زندان هستند که چهار زن بیش از هفتاد سال سن دارن ده نفر اونها بیش از شهست سال سن داره بسیاری از اونها ممنون ملاقات هن و تماس تلفنی با خانواده هاشون محروم هن. زیرا که حکومت در مقابل مقاومت اینا مقاومت نشان میدهد ولی اینا همچنان مقاومت میکنن To conclude because I need to conclude um, I want to, to say that it had been a long time I have no seen my, my wife, uh, 12, 12 years actually. And it's been years since the last time uh, I have met my wife, my children, Ali and Kiana. I haven't met their mother uh, for uh, eight years. Uh, they haven't heard uh, her voice for almost two years because uh, she cannot speak uh, uh, with the phone. Um, and since the start of December, before the Nobel Peace Prize ceremony, the prison authorities cut her contact telephone completely with outside. Um, her visitation has been banned, and she cannot call even even her father in Iran. Communication has been much more difficult with her after she won the Nobel Peace Prize. But overall, the pressure has increased, not only on Nargis Mohammadi, on all political prisoners in Iran, and more especially about women's uh, uh, political prisoner alongside her. 
her uh, cellmates uh, also. And just to say, four women are over uh, 70, 70 years old uh, with alongside Nargis Mohammadi. And 10 of them, uh, the political uh, prisoners, the female, uh, uh, are over 60 over 60, and many of them uh, have been prohibited uh, from making phone calls or, uh, to their families as prison authorities employ the tactic of cutting of phone and visitation privilege to uh, any uh, uh, of their family outside. outside. Uh, Mr. Rahmani, I'm afraid I have to wrap this up now because unfortunately we don't have more time, but I also wanted, wanted to conclude from my side that the fight of yours, of your wife, has been taking such the heaviest possible toll on your family with the children not seeing the mother, with you also not being able to communicate. And of course the consequences that are also being felt by her and other prisoners, especially after the Nobel Peace Prize. At the same time, good, it is good to have this conversation here with you in Davos with this audience, with the people who are here at the annual meeting, because this fight is being seen and is being recognized with the Nobel Peace Prize, with the uh, European Parliament awarding the Sakharov Prize to the Iranian women, it is being recognized. Thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for facilitating this conversation. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.